Good morning, YouTube. Today we are working on this built-in General Electric microwave oven. Now, it's about 15 years old, just so you know. This is a combination oven microwave built-in. And the problem that we have today is that the uh, microwave lights up, fan goes on, but none of the food you put inside gets hot. So that's really bad. Now what I've already done is come over here and there are two, three uh, of these uh, hex screws, sorry, uh, these hex caps on, that go on the bottom of the trim and then you've got two of these Torx screws that they use to hold, this is just to hold the trim in. I've gone ahead and taken the liberty of taking those out, not to waste your time too much. And this is how we're gonna remove the, uh, we're gonna remove this trim around the top here. And this just sort of pops out, you gotta wiggle it a little bit. And let's see if I can do this with one hand without having to put this guy down. Okay. Oops, forgive me for getting that extreme close up. And there we go. It's off. Put this down. And here we are. And this is this is what it looks like once you get the trim off, right? You've got what looks like some spacer units over here for the mounting for the top. This is where the uh, these aren't spacers. This is actually where the exhaust comes out. I'm feeling the little holes over there. This one doesn't have exhaust, so I don't know why they put this in here, but it mounts on top, and the rest of the unit is over here. And now as we come down, I'm seeing paperwork that was put in here uh, 15 years ago, uh, 17 years ago, sorry, when the house was built. I don't know what that is. Looks like it's a service, important service instructions. Do not discard. Well, that was very nice of them to tape those in place. <laughs> We'll have to take a look at that. What we have here is, oh, there's a switch. Let's see, you can see that actuating right there. That's for the oven door. So this is for the oven. Uh, I'm gonna pull this out and find out what this paperwork is for over here. I don't know, but it might be the oven. It might be, might be the oven microwave combination. I can't tell. It is taped in, ah, there we go. And then I'm fighting it. And what do we have here? Oh, look at this. An ancient schematic for what exactly, I do not know. Important, do not discard, blah, blah, blah. And this looks like, is this through the oven? 30 inch wall oven. T010 control motorized door lock, okay. All right, special instruction. This is for the oven, no question about it. Motorized door lock, that's interesting. Wow, this thing is old. You can see that this is all yellowed from being in here. It's got thermal switches, key panel locked. Do they talk about the... No, this is all for the oven, okay. This is all for the oven. And we have our model number here. This is our JT. P90, that is the correct series. That's on the inside of the microwave door as well. Wiring schematic, warning power must be disconnected before servicing the appliance. Okay, well, obviously, before we do anything else, I'm gonna go down to the garage and I am going to uh, shut off the breaker so we don't have to worry about electrocuting ourselves while we work on this. And again, we get uh, this rotates, fan goes, light comes on, that's all good but it's not heating up any unit. It's not heating up any of the food in here. So we know that that's gonna be a problem. We've got two more screws over here, one over here, one over here. Again, these are uh, Torx bit screws. So I'm gonna take those out and then you'll see this is removed. Uh, and then we can start going through uh, once the power shut off and troubleshooting our system. Alrighty, be right back. Okay, so I've taken out the two Torx screws and this rotates out, which is really interesting. And as I rotate this out, there is yet more paperwork. There is an envelope over there against that wall that has paperwork on it. Oh, dear Lord, paperwork, really? How much paperwork can something have? Well, anyway, I don't know what's wrong with this. It could be this board over here. Um, this board could be bad. Uh, that's possible. Could be a relay on the board that's gone bad. Again, don't know. The bottom board is for the oven. The top board is for the microwave controller. 
So I'm gonna peek in the uh, I'm gonna peek in this box over here and find out what we're what we're talking about. You can see oh you can see in here you can see the magnetron that's against the wall over there. And then underneath we have the uh, solenoid and we have the looks like the capacitor is right there the big that big thing right there that's the capacitor. I think we got an overload circuit on the bottom uh, some sort of a I said overload circuit, it's a, I uh, forget what that's called, but it works like an overload circuit. And then of course I see a black wire coming off of this thing over here. I'm wondering if that's not the diode. I can't see it, gotta get my head in there. Probably have to take this thing off. Um, and I'm also gonna take a look at that paperwork. So I'll be back in a sec. Okay, I have uncovered more paperwork. And that was in that little envelope I showed you. And this is the wiring schematic diagram for our um, well, that's, that's, that's not the actual one. It is the JTP, um, I think it's the JTP 965 is what we're dealing with right here. Um, well, actually the JPT 90, but it's the, yeah, it's the 90, uh, 965. And that's on the inside of the door, by the way, of the microwave. It'll tell you exactly which number it is. But what we have here is a technical data sheet, right? And, uh... It is the electric wall oven with microwave is what they call this. So uh, that'll be in the description, maybe the title. Um, we have sensors, okay. We have uh, primary inter interlocks, monitor switches, how to test the monitor, microwave leakage test, standard load test, performance test, door, right? Oh, this is very important because they tell you that about 70 to 80% of the time, it's one of these door sensor slash switches that's gone bad. So that's the first thing we're going to check. Make sure that we don't have a bad switch. Uh, then we have magnetron replacement. Um, probably have to remove the entire thing if we're going to go for the magnetron, uh, but hopefully I won't have to worry about that. Let's see, we got fault codes. But you know what, We've no fault has shown up, so we don't have to worry about that. There's a demo mode. That's interesting. All right. Hmm, hmm. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Yeah, so obviously, you always read these uh, warning things, which are usually the first thing on there. Disconnect power before servicing. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna show off the power. Precautions, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and of course, you're dealing with a capacitor inside this thing that can kill you. So always discharge the capacitor. Use a big uh, screwdriver or whatever. If you don't know what you're doing, don't do this. This is not a, uh, gee whiz, I saw a YouTube video and I'm gonna do this and I have no knowledge of electronics or anything else. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, do not do this. This is not to do for something that you don't know what you're doing. Um, if you are an electrical engineer with a master's degree in electrical engineering and you feel comfortable doing this, then by all means do this. If you are a professional repair person who, again, does this kind of thing for a living, feel free to do this. If you are just somebody who learned what a screwdriver was yesterday and has no knowledge of anything, don't, don't do this. Ah, love this diagnostic flowchart right here. Diagnostic flowchart. Oven runs but no heat. Hmm. Plug in oven select function, turn on this, blah, blah, blah. No, check supply circuits, trans interlock switches, OL fuses, wiring, etc. That's it right there. Plug in the oven, uh, voltage, transformer. Right, so it's telling you here to turn on, to turn, to turn on, and check the primary volts to the power transformer is 120 volts. So. What they're talking about are the primary wires going into the transformer. You want to make sure that the transformer is powered with 120 volts. So that's the first thing you check is that. That and uh, if that works, unplug and check transformer power, HV windings, correct, ohms. Okay, that's what the power shut off. Yeah, unplug and check the ohms, right? Uh, yes, check if the capacitor is good. If not, replace the failed component, replace the magnetron, right? That's when you know to replace the magnetron. Then of course you have the microwave control, uh, control which could be bad. So if you're getting 
120 volts to your transformer. Mm -hmm. So you, it's telling you to check primary and HV windings, but uh, that's when it's unplugged. So it's, yeah. Okay. We will do this. This is the first thing we will do. Alrighty, be right back. Okay, I want to take a quick second here uh, for a shout out to whoever the engineer was that designed this, because this is pretty brilliant. So you got the top unit, you got the oven, right? Stacked on top of each other. How does this work? How is it held in place? And this is really, really, this is, this is good design. Right here, we got a screw. Right here, we got a screw. And these are rails. And this entire microwave unit slides in on this rail. Yes. Yes. That's brilliant. That is a good design. Someone was really thinking. You got the bottom unit over here. You got the top unit. How do we put them together in a way that is still serviceable? And this is what they did. They did these rails. Got a rail on top, a rail on bottom. This rail down here is attached to the, to the bottom part of the microwave, as is this one. And then it's just one, two screws, just these two simple screws. You take them out, this whole thing slides. And as you can see in here, we got some armored BX cable, got a bunch of armored BX. We can disconnect, because the, remember the oven is controlled over here, right? So we disconnect these cables, that's the oven control. And we can just slide this out to service this unit. That is friggin' brilliant. Now, obviously, we're probably going to have to pull the whole thing out uh, to get at what we need to get at. But, wow, awesome design, guys. Great job. Big shout out to whoever this was back in the day that said, let's do it this way and not like make life hell for whoever is going to have to work on this. Oh, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for doing this. This, this is brilliant. This is just really, really good design. Thank you. All right, on to the next part. Okay, so I have my multimeter out here. I've set it for AC voltage and I've put it to the 200 number. This is like the cheapest multimeter you could ever buy. Anyway, you want to test it first to make sure that, you know, it actually does what it's supposed to do. So, I'm just going to stick it into an outlet over here. Do, 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 do. And we stick it in, and what does it say? Well, it doesn't say anything because it's not in the right spot. Here we go. Oh. Hang on, i got to stick it in better. Here we go. Yep. Sorry about that, got to adjust it. There we go. By the way, folks, this is hard to do with one hand, so hang on a second. Here we go. I keep saying here we go, like it means something. Up oh, 119.6, you can see it's stuck into the little prongs are stuck in. And that's what we're supposed to get, right? 120 volts out of a socket. So we know that this works. Now, by the way, this is the only test, the only test that I'm gonna do with this thing powered up is to check to make sure that 120 volts is going into the transformer. Now, it's gonna be hard to do, but I'm not doing any other live tests. Everything else, the breaker will be shut off, and I'm really hoping that this says zero like this across the meter, because if it does, that means that the problem is coming from either the board or the switches. The switches are a super cheap fix, real easy to do. The board, I have to send out, it's about 130 bucks, Totally worth it. Now you may say to yourself, uh, it comes to a different issue. You may say to yourself, hey, like 130 bucks for the board, I can buy a microwave like that one for less than 100 bucks. Why would I do that? Because aesthetics, right? If you live with people, wife, woman, etc., um, they're going to say, hey, I want this thing fixed because it's, you know, a whole giant unit and we can't just throw the whole thing away and to replace the whole thing, it's going to cost a 40, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, yes. So, uh, if if it were that unit over there that you know is less than 100 bucks and it costs more than that to repair it, well, I would just throw it in the trash. Here, 
we're not going to do that. Here we're going to hope that we can fix it for a decent price. And all right, I'm going to test this thing right now uh, live before I go off on another tangent rant. But uh, you may not be able to see this because I can't do this with one hand. So you're just going to see the back of me for a little bit as I, as I set this up and do this. You're going to have to take my word for it. Uh, I'm going to put it on for like two minutes. I know there's no microwaves coming out of it. So that's not going to be an issue. I'm going to fold this away from here. I'm going to put this guy in here. I'll put it on for two, zero. I'm going to clear that time code. Two, zero, zero. You know what? I'm going to clear that for a second. I'm going to put on my gloves because, hey, better safe than sorry, right? Nobody wants to be sorry. Nobody wants to be safe. And again, I'm hoping that I get zero voltage going into the transformer. And I can tell pretty easily because it'll just tell me. There's two little prongs in here that I can attach this to. So we're going to go time cook, two, zero, zero, start. Actually, what I can do is take this guy off of here. I can take this off. All right. Let's gonna take it off and let it hang. Which probably is not the best thing to do, but whatever. There we go. numbers 116 volts going in okay so yeah all right so you know what we got a problem 116 volts going in 116.7 okay now we know all right we got voltage going into this shut this thing off the strap is doing a good job of keeping everything strapped. All right, let's shut this guy off. Clear. Okay. All righty. Okay. Well, that's not good because that means that the transformer is providing power to the magnetron and the capacitor and everything else. So, so why is that really bad? Well, it means that we have to now look at replacing, we have to now remove this entire unit from, from here. So we're gonna have to take out these two screws, slide it on out in order to get to, in order to remove this top metal piece that goes all the way around which is work. And once that's removed and the whole thing is slid out, then we can actually have access to the magnetron, the capacitor, uh, the diode, anything else in there that we need to get a hold of. So it just means that we do not have a quick, easy fix as I had hoped. Instead, we have the beginnings of a much longer drawn out process, but we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. So we know that the uh, switches all work because we got voltage going to the thing. And we know that the uh, the board works. So that's 130 bucks saved. Uh, yeah, all right. On to the next component we test. Okay, so I've put this over in a space that I can work on it. Uh, it's a very large, you know, I mean, it's 30 inches wide, but then it goes pretty deep and it's 
pretty big. So uh, I'm going to be taking off this panel over here, and then we'll see if I have to remove the entire over panel thing. So I'm going to have this all apart. Don't need to really show you me just unscrewing screws, but it's basically going to be taking apart this super structure uh, to get at the magnetron, the capacitor, and of course the diode as well as the transformer, which is what we really want to see here. Okay, everybody, so here we are. We have our unit apart. We've taken off this piece over here, which exposes uh, our magnetron right here, our transformer. We can see our capacitor, and we can see from the capacitor the diode. And we're going to be checking all these. Now, the first thing we're going to do is uh, we are going to discharge, make sure that the capacitor is discharged. And the easiest way to do that is by taking the pliers, some needle nose pliers like so, and uh, sticking it in there and wiggling it around. And I should probably put on some gloves just for extra safety, so hang on a sec. Okay, so I pulled off one wire. Now I'm pulling off the other wire. There's actually two wires. One goes to this diode and the other one goes to the other uh, line from going up to the magnetron. So I'm going to pull both of those out. Okay. That's the magnetron wire. And then lastly but not leastly, we're going to take out this diode wire. And out she comes. Now I'm going to cross this thing. And there may be a pop or something. We're going to discharge this. And that should be discharged. Can't tell, but it should be. Ah. Stick a piece of wire in there or something. Cross both of these things just to definitely get it out. But yeah, this this will do it. 99 times out of 100, you would hear like a loud pop if there was a problem there. So, onward and upward, we're gonna test our transformer right here. Uh, we're gonna test this diode with a nine volt battery in our multimeter. We're gonna test our capacitor with, a, uh, with the multimeter. And of course, uh, last but not least, we are going to test our uh, magnetron. All right, so let's go and start the process on these four components. And it's not going to be that hard. Uh, it's just a little time consuming and you have to, you know, do it by the numbers. So here we go. All right, I'm happy to say that we are concluding this project. Hooray, the microwave is fixed, the trim is back, has been reinstalled and put in place, and we have fresh popcorn. Yay! So, addendum, side note, whatever you want to call it, the manual that came with this that was inside the microwave oven on the inside of the door here that had the wiring diagram and the schematic was completely and totally correct. It said if you go through this checklist and all of these things check out, the only thing to do is replace the magnetron, which is what I did, and it worked. It worked, hooray!